Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show. My name is Christina Previtt. I am one of two lead faculty for clinical management of the fitness athlete pregnancy and postpartum. We have two online offering. We have one online offering, one live offering. Sorry. We have our eight-week online course where we talk about everything female athletes, starting from you know trying to conceive and issues that female athletes have to all the way through pregnancy, birth, and into postpartum return to CrossFit. And then we also have our live course that is starting in February of 2022. And we are going to be doing our inaugural course in Hendersonville, Tennessee. So it's or Tennessee. I think that's right. Oh my gosh, this is like that was such a Canadian move. Sorry, um, uh, that was right. Um, today we're going to be talking about something um, that's come up a lot and is probably on the more embarrassing side to talk about, uh, but is actually pretty common, and that is queefing during handstand push-ups. So, what is a queef? First, queef is a release of air through the vaginal opening. I'm going to take this away from my puppy. And it is actually really common uh, occurrence for female athletes. We talk about um, releasing gas in the bottom of a squat in terms of some of the constructs we are thinking about with fecal incontinence. However, we don't really talk about um, release of gas or air when it comes to urinary incontinence, which I think is actually kind of interesting. So when a female athlete releases air, it can create an audible sound. And that is what is termed colloquially as a queef. And it can be really embarrassing for female athletes. Um, it can be something that if you're in the middle of a CrossFit workout, you are really glad that the music is on really loud because you do not want somebody to hear you. It can be something when you're doing inversions in a yoga class that can be potentially mortifying and you don't even know that this is something that's going to happen to you. Of course, when I was thinking about the, the um, research and all that things for doing this episode, I went to the uh, literature and there was actually really nothing that was talking about what happens when we are doing a queef. So this is all going to be theoretical based on my understanding of anatomy and I've experienced this personally. I'm going to grab my model and talk a little bit about why I think this could happen and why it could definitely be common postpartum. Okay, so one of the normal things that happens after a vaginal delivery is that we have an increase in the size of the introitus or the vaginal opening. We also have a massive stretch injury. And PS, I'm not saying that this only happens postpartum, but it's definitely more common postpartum. So it can happen all the time, like with other female athletes, depending on what's going on with them from a pelvic health perspective. Okay, so increased size of the opening, a massive stretch injury, and you're going to have weakness because of that reorientation that happens and that need to reestablish pelvic floor strength postpartum. So all these things can create this perfect storm where we're trying to regain control, right? Which is why it's very common if you sneeze, cough, laugh really loud or laugh really hard postpartum, especially in the first six weeks, you can have incontinence. And that is, I don't want to say normal because I get jumped on, but you know, it's, it's very common because you're still healing. It's not something that I would be stressing about in the first six weeks postpartum. Okay. So then what happens when we try and go upside down? So if we think about where gravity is acting, we have all of our pelvic organs that are helping to create this almost like suction and closing of the sphincters in our urinary tract and in our bowels, right? So we have the gravity as well as pelvic floor muscle strength, and that is going to close these sphincters when we don't want them to be open. When we go upside down, shoo, all of a sudden, those, those organs and that pressure and weight that are helping to keep that seal are no longer there. So now we go from a gravity dependent to a gravity independent kind of, um, and that changes some of the, the way that our pelvic floor is functioning. We don't have a ton of research on this. This is my theory. So because of that, there can be a slight opening or gapping that wouldn't cause incontinence because you're not having that downward pressure, but it could cause air 
to come into that vaginal opening and kind of sit here. Most of the time when women are going to queef, it is going to be when they are coming down, when they are crunching down for a handstand push up, when they are kicking down from the wall, or once they have stood up and those organs again start to put pressure down on the pelvic floor and you get that audible noise that comes out. Where you can also experience this more commonly um, is for individuals who have a prolapse, there's potentially pockets with some of the, the shifting of the vaginal walls that can create more, um, more likelihood that this is going to happen or a bigger air bubble, or for individuals who are still working on pelvic floor muscle strengthening. So I hope that makes sense, right? So we're going upside down, our organs are shifting within our abdominal cavity, now we don't have that pressure down on the pelvic floor. It creates a slight opening. Air is allowed to come in and sit within that opening. You flip back into a gravity dependent situation. All of a sudden that air pocket that was in the vaginal opening starts to come out or be moved out of the way and you get that audible sound that comes as you are coming down out of the inversion. Or if you're trying to strain and hopefully not bear down, but that straining can cause a movement of some of those pelvic organs and lead to that audible noise that you're experiencing out of the vagina. Another time that this, the queefing can happen is depending on your certain uh, sexual positions. Again, that air bubble can come in and you can have that audible sound, especially uh, early postpartum, it might be more likely to occur. Not saying that it won't occur if you're in early Paris or if you're further away from having had a child or you've had a, be a belly birth. Okay, so we kind of have an understanding of why this might happen. Now, what are we gonna do about it? So there are a couple of ways that we can try and work on um, keeping that air out of the vaginal canal so that it can improve uh, the incidence or reduce the incidence of having a queef happen. Um, so number one is how we kick up from the wall. So if we're gonna kick up to the wall and your legs are gonna be splayed, you're gonna have a little bit more of a likelihood of that introitus opening slightly and that air coming in. So sometimes I'll cue my athletes to try and like scissor kick with their feet if they have that comfort around coming up against the wall. That is going to be number one, a strategy to use. Number two is going to be the, to prime the pelvic floor or try and perform not a max contraction, but a Kegel as you are kicking up. So what that can do is it can prime the pelvic floor to keep that sphincter closed and prevent air pockets from coming in. So that's number one. That's number two. Number three is if you see a pelvic PT and they can help you with pelvic floor muscle strengthening, because sometimes that's a coordination or weakness injury. It's why we see it more often early postpartum um, or when people are experiencing other pelvic health issues. So that could be another thing is to try and look at your um, coordination of your pelvic floor. Because again, going inverted isn't necessarily something that's overly common. So we're not, we're gonna have to train that position. And if there is some underlying weakness that's going on, then we can work on strengthening that so that the sphincter stays closed or the pelvic floor can contract the way that we want it to so that there isn't some of that air coming into the vaginal opening. That would be number three. Um, and number four, this is kind of not a what to do about it, but we need to sometimes bring this up as clinicians because this would be in the people feel like this is TMI camp or the I never want to talk about this happening to me because I'm so mortified camp or Christina I can't believe you're coming on a podcast and talking about this because I never want to talk about this camp and so sometimes we need to ask if you're experiencing any of these symptoms because it is something that can improve with training and with rehab um, it is something that doesn't have to be normal we don't want to especially in these types of gymnastics movements if you are worried that you're going to make audible sounds out of an area that you don't want to be making audible sounds from you actually might be hesitating coming up into that inverted position and that's not what we want to be doing with these gymnastic skills because as soon as we lose that cage as soon as we lose that locked out arms because we're so worried about other things Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I don't have any or boundaries, I guess, when it comes to this type of stuff. TMI doesn't exist for me in pelvic health. Um, but if you lose that cage because you're so worried that 
you're going to be making sounds and the people beside you are, are going to be hearing you, you're probably not thinking about, oh, I need to lock up into the right position. I need to prime my core. I need everything to be strong. And that's when injuries can happen, right? We always talk about this in the pelvic health space. We talk about this when it comes to leaking under barbells. I do not want you to be thinking about doing a Kegel when you're doing a max clean. I want you to be thinking about all the all the other points of performance that are going to keep your injury rate risk low and keep you pushing as much weight as possible against the barbell. <laughs> Love it. Um, Lindsay's telling me to go crush those boundaries. There's no such thing as TMI and I, I totally agree. Um, okay, so kind of let's recap this, bring this around full circle. Escaping of air through the vaginal opening is termed a queef. It can happen a lot in yoga with inversions, in CrossFit with handstand pushups and other gymnastics-based movements. It often is a result of uh, either a stretch injury from a vaginal birth, an air pocket coming in because of maybe a pre-existing prolapse, or a weakness issue of the pelvic floor. When we go inverted, our organs and our abdominal cavity shift, and that gives an a chance for air to get into the vaginal opening when we come back down from the handstand that air releases and you get this audible sound that's termed a queef it is often very embarrassing for people to be talking about so as a clinician you might have to ask if there are anything like that that happens um i've actually polled random clinicians who have done who do crossfit and asked them about this they think that i'm maybe a little bit weird because i'm asking it but i wanted to see if this trend was fairly consistent across other people's practices, and it is. How are we gonna fix it as clinicians? We're gonna work on priming the pelvic floor before. We're gonna work on trying not to splay our legs out in terms of our form with our handstand push-up. We are going to tell our athletes that it's absolutely going to be okay. And four, we're gonna to refer to pelvic PT so that we can make sure that there is no underlying weakness or coordination issues that we can clean up, and then it can significantly help with these symptoms. If you are early postpartum and you were experiencing this, I have experienced this myself. Thank goodness I was in my garage and that made me all, hmm, I wonder if this is really common because I have heard it before. People have asked me about it before and now I'm experiencing it myself. Um, just know that your body is still healing from a massive stretch injury. There was an entire body that was in your vaginal canal if you were delivering from a baby vaginally. That is going to have to reestablish. So if you are five weeks postpartum, six weeks postpartum, and you're trying to invert and you're feeling that happen, your body is still healing. And you might actually not need rehab, you just need time. And so please don't stress. If this is something that is really bothering you, reach out, um, reach out to me and we can have a chat about it. But just know that this is something that can happen. It is not something to be embarrassed about. I totally understand. I wouldn't want to be passing gas in the bottom of the squat or in an inverted position. That is absolutely okay, but we can talk about it and it can be helped. And this is not something that you just have to live with. All right. If you want to cross all the boundaries and learn all about the TMI, you can jump into our CMFA pregnancy and postpartum. Our next cohort starts early 2022 in January. If you want to talk about all these things in person, Come check us out live. We are in Hendersonville for our first cohort in February. We just added dates for Denver and Greenville, South Carolina. So check those dates out. If you have any other questions about this, let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful Monday, everyone. Hopefully we broke down the barriers and you're like ready to go on your Monday. And uh, we'll keep chatting soon. Have a great day, everyone. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.